All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this lesson here uh, comes from a movie that I seen yesterday. And it's called Infinite. Infinite. All right, it's a real good watch. You know, I advise brothers to go check this movie out. It's a real good watch. Well, for me, it was, you know, and um, us brothers of the hopeful elect, you know, the Lord gave us that light to see, you know, this, this movie here, it deals with reincarnation. All right. Reincarnation. And uh, it just proves that these uh, directors, these writers, you know, who come up with these movies, they are inspired by the scriptures. They are inspired by the prophets and men of the Lord who bring out and edify through the word of the Lord, the scriptures, you know, because uh, throughout this whole movie, they were quoting Bible scriptures, you know, a few times. All right. And, um, you know, brothers in the camp over here, they, they call me the spoiler, you know, for spoiling the movies. But I got to give some details, man. All right. If, uh, if I'm spoiling the movie for you, just skip past if you can catch it. All right. But, um, you know, this movie um, is very edifying and it's real good. You have two good actors. Uh, you have here Mark Wahlberg. All right. Which I believe he's an Israelite through the spirit. I didn't look up his bio, his father or nothing like that. But uh, all the movies I've seen him play in, he always had that salt like Jake, you know. So, you know, I believe he's an Israelite. If I'm wrong, correct me. All right. Now, the other good actor here, which I can't pronounce his name, uh, the British actor, you know, when I see his movies, I click on him because he's a real good actor as well, you know, and he's also a filmmaker, you know, he play good roles, man, and they play, they play him well. So, you know, these two guys here are the good and bad. He plays the bad guy and Mark Wahlberg plays the good guy, which it just shows you how, how, how Esau do the flip flopping, you know. They, they want to tell you some truth, but then they got to flip-flop it to throw you off. Because here it is, this, the brown face, you know, me more melanated uh, brother here. Brown skin. All right, he's the bad guy playing Esau. And then you got Mark Wahlberg, you know, playing Jacob, the good guy. All right. But um, it's a real good watch, man. Um, another thing, you got to learn to chew the meat, spit out the bones. All right. You know, it's, it's best that you understand the scriptures first, you know, and then, you know, seeing these movies, it just, you know, brings more enlightenment. You know, it just put things in, uh, it makes your mind fixed on the scriptures, you know, because you understand the scriptures. You understand the truth, the 100% truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and what the word is saying. All right. Uh, you have to watch out for, because um, what they did in this movie with Mark Wahlberg was uh, him being reincarnated. And he was reincarnated into different people, you know, different nations. Now, biblical, we not, we're not reincarnated into different nations. You are what your father is, okay? So you come back within that nation. You don't come back being a, you don't start being an Israelite and then you die and then you come back and being an Edomite. No, all right? You come back being an Israelite from the seed of your father. You're passed down through your generational line from the seed of your father. All right. Now, the word regeneration, which uh, shows up two times in the scriptures, Matthews 19.28 and Titus 3 and 5. So when we go into Matthews 19.28, it says, And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, you can go into the blue letter here. You can go into the blue letter here and go into the word regeneration, which is a Greek word. Strong's G, 3824. Polygenesia. Polygenesia. All right, which uh, gives us new birth, reproduction, renewal, recreation, regeneration. All right. 
It says, um, hence, renovation, regeneration, the production of a new life consecrated to God, a radical change of a mind for the better, the word often used to denote the restoration of a thing to its pristine state, its renovation as a renewal or resurrection, restoration of life after death. Now, to get better understanding, you know, to, you know, just get to the point what it says here in the Strong's spiritual renovation spiritually the uh, all right regeneration all right let's get out of there let's go to the etymology and when you put uh regeneration you get regenerate okay regenerate so when you go into the word regenerate it says reborn reproduce restored from the lat from latin regeneratus uh, to re regenerate, bring forth again. All right, bring forth again. To uh, even go into regener regenerate, you go into the dictionary.com to effect a complete moral reforming, to recreate, reconstitute, or make over, especially in better form or condition, to come into existence or be formed again. All right, regeneration. How are you brought back through the seed of your father to reform, become regenerate, reconstituted or made over in a better form, reformed. Okay, now when you go down here to the origin of regenerate, Middle English, regenerare, the Latin regenerare, to bring forth again. So that's what regeneration means. To bring forth again. Alright. Alright, so that's just a bone that they have in the movie. Uh another thing that come out is that I that I thought of Elder Apostle Gabar and uh how he said from time to time uh the word educate. Educate means to bring out, you know, because this movie deals with spiritual powers. Alright. This movie deals with spiritual powers. Damn, fucking safe, man. All right, this movie deals with spiritual powers and um, the word educate means to draw out. So that means that you already have the knowledge in you, but it has to be drawn out. And in this movie, you know, him and being in this, this, this uh, flesh he's in, being reincarnated in this body, his whole mission was to figure out what it is he already knew from his past life, you know? And the scriptures say, uh, the Lord will bring us into the things we once knew. He will bring us into remembrance of things we once knew. So spiritual powers is already within the, the brothers who the Lord is going to ignite that spiritual powers in. Okay? We already have it, but it has to be drawn out. See, the Lord is drawing, drawing out who we are from the past. Because the scriptures say the prophets are subject to the prophets. Alright? And you're remembering the things you once knew because the word of the Lord. Alright? By this word of the Lord being taught, the Lord is waking up his prophets. He's waking up his men. Uh, Ezekiel. Uh, where the Lord speaks about how he's blowing the breath upon the dry bones. They shall stand upon their feet. Alright. So, it starts with the men of the Lord. You know, and then the rest of the elect. That's going to be sealed for deliverance. You know. And it's going to be drawn out of you. So, in this movie, it uh, it made me think of that. Oh, Elder Apostle Gabar was, uh, uh, has said about educate means to be drawn out you know so it's a real good watch brothers watch it i don't want to keep continuing saying the same thing you know but uh let's go into the word infinite that's the title of the movie it says eternal limitless also extremely great in number all right because infinite eternal limitless because reincarnation is limitless all right as, as long as this earth abide forever you constantly keep coming back. But we we know, all right, us of the whole four elect, that the Lord, all right, Yahweh Shai, when he come and crack those clouds and recover the remnant of his elect, uh, Apostle Paul spoke in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, how there will, uh, 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 there will be an end to the sting of death. So fulfilling Psalms 82 and 6, that we are God's, that when Yahweh bring the kingdom, he destroyed Esau, 
which is NATO, starting with NATO and the European Union, he destroyed them and built up his kingdom in the earth, all right, with his elect that, look, we're never going to die, man. Even Apostle Paul went into that. He said, uh, be not ignorant of this mystery. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thou sting? O grave, O grave, where is thou victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahawashai Hamashiach. There's going to be an end to the Israelites dying. Because when we have the kingdom through Yahawashai, we're not going to die anymore. And the reason why we die is because of sin. Sin is transgression of the Lord's laws. So when you transgress the Lord's laws, you're committing sin. Now, I don't want to go off track, but there was a video I saw earlier with the elder brother from South Carolina. And uh, he did a beautiful edifying video in reproving and correcting some ninja, you know, that think that he could keep all the laws. We can't keep all the laws. If we kept all the laws, then what need of Yahweh Shai to us? What need of a savior? And the laws, all right, because Apostle Paul went into it uh, with the Israelite foreigners, that if they keep us of the law, then they'd be of the circumcision, okay? So they're not no longer of the uncircumcision, they're of the circumcision. Just like us brothers, all right? We're rehearsers and keepers of the law. Now, we know that the laws of the Lord is not going to save us, but the laws are there to govern our flesh. The laws were created by the Heavenly Father to give to us Israelites to govern our flesh, all right? To give us law and order. Without law and order, it's confusion. So the Lord gave us law, which in the beginning was with was was oral, and then it was written in stone, all right, and given to Moses to give to the children of Israel. And that's to separate us from the other nations, to make us holy, which the word holy means to separate. But we of we that being Israelites of Yasha Allah, he prince power, being a power and prince of the most high, okay? Well, being a prince of the power, being a prince of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, right? We have law. We have law and order. So we're rehearsers of the righteous acts. It's to govern our flesh. And we're going to make mistakes, all right? Because why? We're not perfect. We're striving to be perfect. And that's why we need Yahweh Shai. We need Yahweh Shai, all right? So anyway, I didn't want to go off subject. Let's get back to this. Infinite, eternal, limitless, also extremely great in number from old French infinite endless boundless and directly from Latin infinitus unbounded unlimited countless numberless from in not opposite of finitus defining definite from finis in okay it says the meat the noun meaning that which is infinite is from 1580 so the word infinite means not in or in not okay it comes from the latin infinitus which means unbounded unlimited countless numberless from in which the in represents not opposite of uh finitus defining definite from finis in so the finis is in so so in not all right endless so being reincarnated is endless until Yahweh Shai come and crack those clouds and bring the kingdom of heaven here in the earth all right for the Israelites all right so that's the word infinite and um the Bible teaches of reincarnation and I have one account here which I want to uh I want to uh bring out 
All right, this is Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jehovah Shai taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. So Yahweh Shai transfigured. Okay? It says, And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make here thee, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, which Elias is Elijah. It says, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Yahweh Shai came and touched them, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Yahweh Shai only. It says, verse 9, And as they came down from the mountain, Yahweh Shai charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So what they witnessed, man, is a miracle, man, that Yahweh Shai did. He transfigured, all right? And he showed, showed them, you know the spiritual the spiritual body all right that's came that came down as moses all right and elijah all right so so it says and as they came down from the mountain yahweh shai uh, charged them saying tell the vision to no man until the son of man be risen again from the dead it says and his disciples asked him saying why then say the scribes and elias must first come and Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And it says, Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So what we're reading is that Yahweh Shai revealed unto the disciples here that he took up with him to the mountain. He revealed unto them that Elias, which is Elijah, was John the Baptist. And that's why in verse 13 it says, Then the disciples understood, they understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So let's read 11 again. It says, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. And restore all things but I say unto you that Elias is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them now we know what happened to Elijah Elijah was taken up in a chariot all right he didn't die as a regular man he was taken up and for him to come back and it says, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. All right. This was John. This is what Yahweh Shah is telling him. This is John. John the Baptist. It says, likewise also shall the son of man suffer of them. Because the same, that they, the same thing that happened to John the Baptist, you know, being uh, persecuted, was the same thing that's going to happen to Yahweh Shah. All right. But what happened to Yahweh Shah was greater. Okay, and they knew it not. When Yahweh Shai gave up the spirit, all right, what happened? You had the uh, temple rent, you had the thundering, you had the earthquake, you had the dead rise up out of the grave. So that's when they knew that he was the son of the heavenly father. So it says, then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So now they had understanding that John the Baptist was Elijah. This is reincarnation. And when you watch the movie, Infinite, you watch this movie, you're going to get all of this, man. You're going to get the spiritual powers. You're going to get the um, the uh, reincarnation. It's good. It's a good watch, man. It's a good watch. All right. And uh, real quick, just to prove that uh, John didn't know who he was, because even in this movie, Infinite, 
he didn't know who he was neither. All right, but there, there was a, it was a world of basically in the movie of those who had the gift from the Heavenly Father to remember who they was in the past. And he was like, he was like the Yahweh Shai, all right? He was like the savior, okay? That forgot who he was, but he did have the gift. He had the abilities to remember who he was and to remember the skills in which he possessed. All the fighting, you know, all of the uh, techniques and things that he knew from all of his past lives, he all, he remembered all of it. So when that flesh he was in, he was able to, um, to uh, perform, you know, with great power, man. So let me get uh, the book of John, the first chapter, and I'll start at uh, 17. It says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahawashat, Hamashiach. No man have seen the Most High at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And that's another point in the movie too, all right? The, um, the uh, Ted, you know, the, the British actor that played the bad guy, you know, he, he basically had a, a problem with the Most High. And it showed you in the movie that they believed in the Most High. And the Lord, the Heavenly Father, never showed his face unto them. And he was pissed off about it, man. He was pissed off. He said, and, and, <laughs> he, he wanted to end the cycle of reincarnation, man. You know, and then one one part in the movie was he was about to accomplish his work. He was about to accomplish uh, his his uh, success, his ent you know his uh, his his uh, his goal. He was about to accomplish his goal. All right, and he said, "Do you think?" He said, "Do you think that he'll let us do this?" <laughs> you gotta watch that movie, man. He said, "Do you think he will let us do this?" Because he he was so, he got so close, all he had to do was finish one little part, and that's what's gonna happen to you, Edomites, man. Job, Job, uh, what's that? Twenty and five. <laughs> the height and elevation of his pride, the Lord gonna take you down, man. And you know what? And when I was watching it, I said, well, that's because the Lord want to see a movie, so he let the he let the um, the wicked get this close. Get that close. The Lord let the wicked get this close of accomplishing his work. And then all of a sudden, he loses. That's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Call Halal Lah Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because it's a movie. All right. To him. All right. We, we are his creatures, man. All right. So anyway, uh, John 1 and 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are thou? And he confessed. And deny not, but confess it. I am not the anointed. It says, And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he say, I am not. Art thou the, that prophet? And he answered, No. So John the Baptist did not know he was Elias because he was blocked, just like we're blocked. We don't know who we was in our past life. We don't know. So John didn't know. And he told the truth it says then said they unto him who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us what sayest thou of thyself he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord as said the prophet Isaiah. all right which was in isaiah so you had a uh, prophecy which is uh, coming to pass, okay, when John said this. And he did not know who he was. Right, let, let me just grab a few quick quick precepts dealing with reincarnation. Little quick ones. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1, verse 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. 
Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It have been already of old time, which has, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Let's go to uh, the book of Jude. This is the book of Jude chapter 1 verse 5. I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord had been saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe it not, that believe not. So the Lord said, I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. So we are being put in remembrance of the things we once knew. And that's by the start of knowing that we're Israelites and, and the name, let me say the name of our power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, the Father and the Son, and that we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, man. All right, because it starts with that. So it says, I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. So the Lord can put us in remembrance of things we once knew. Because why? It's already in us. It just needs to be what? Drawed out. As Apostle Gabar uh, uh, um, brought that out, the word educate. The word educate. All right, now let me get another one. This is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 31. It says, For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay, because the prophet comes back being a prophet. There is no new prophets, you know, that the Lord is just going to choose just to do what he wants. Now, the Lord could do that, but the Lord has set an order up, okay? He made the prophets from the very beginning, and I'm talking about the prophets of the Lord, all right? Because you can have heathen prophets, but you, we're talking about prophets of the Heavenly Father, which is going to prophesize in his name, all right? It says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Because even with heathens, you got old, you got heathens that were sorcerers, that dealt with black magic, you know, evilness. They're back here today too. And they carry that same spirit from the very beginning that was given to them. So it says, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, see, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints, which the saints represents Israelites, let your woman oh hi, right. well let, let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. All right, that's that. Now let me go into the book to the apocrypha. Second Edges fourteen. Second Edges fourteen and verse thirty five. It says, for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Whew, and I'm going to end on that note, man. That's it. Second address 14 and 35. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again because you receive judgment for what you've done in your flesh while you're in the flesh all right you don't receive judgment after you die you receive the judgment you're told of what probably going to happen to you all right but you you actually manifest that judgment manifests that reward comes to you while you're in the flesh so it says for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. All right. So Lord willing, I hope and pray that this lesson is edifying to those of the hopeful elect. Uh, I watched this movie yesterday. I thought it was a good watch. I just want to do a quick lesson on it. It's dealing with reincarnation. It's called infinite. And we looked that word infinite up. The word infinite means endless or not in and not. All right. 
And what they're talking about is reincarnation because in this movie, it's a world of people who have a gift to remember who they was in a past life. And then you got the opposite of those people who, who, who wants to destroy that, you know? They want to destroy the people with the gift that could remember. And it wasn't just about remembrance. It was also about drawing out, you know, the skills and the power that they had in their past. They, carry, they, they, they channeled it because they had it already and they had it in their new flesh, reincarnation. Hopefully, I hope this lesson is edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.